The S&P 500 daily cloud chart shows more clearly the conversion line crossing under the baseline. And the last time it went above the baseline, the conversion line crossed above back in May 17th of this year. So that's a pretty good run. Three months, 90 days. It's pretty good. And the beauty of the cloud chart is that we get to look back 26 bars for the lagging line and look forward 26 bars to where the cloud will be positioned. So for tomorrow on the 16th, the lagging line will hit the conversion line at 4430.16. And that's right about where the 50 exponential moving average is at 4431.31. And the Bollinger Band lower band is right there too. So I do expect a bounce. I don't know how high, but I do expect a little bounce up because there was an overlap buy signal given on this bar here we'll go look at that later so if it does bounce and can hold around this level in five days on the 20th the Ichimoku baseline will be at 44.27.26 bars back and that's right where the top of the cloud will be on the 21st I think that's four days Yes, four days it will be there. So there could be a bounce of the lagging line off of the conversion line around then. And then have a bounce up again if there's a downdraft to meet that level here. So anytime you can get the lagging line to coincide with a level over here concerning the cloud... That's a pretty good indication of support or a bounce-worthy area. And with propulsion on, we can see that the 50% and 100% momentum down was qualified on today's bar. As there was a down close followed by an up close followed by a down close below the level in question. So for tomorrow on the 16th, if price opens below this close and ticks lower than the low on the same bar here and closes below the close from this bar on the 16th, then this level will become qualified and confirmed the 50%, which is at 4413.78. And then the propulsion qualified and possibly confirmed exhaustion down at 4220.49. And for right now, that's the closest level to the D wave up for projection 61.8 Fibonacci retracement level 4243.12. So that's right around the bottom of the cloud here. So in seven days, the lagging line will be lined up with this for a possible hit at the bottom of the cloud, 26 bars back. And that's right at the D wave up for 61.8 Fibonacci projection retracement. So for right now, this is the only level near there, that 100% propulsion exhaustion down. And there is a gap zone from June 1st, 2023. So the high of that bar is 4232.43, which will put it in that area there. So if price can make it down to that level, it could bounce from this gap zone and the bottom of the cloud concerning the lagging line and get a decent bounce on the 16th and have a close above this propulsion momentum up that's disqualified. And that will be qualified at end of day with a close above that level. And price has pretty much nailed 
the qualified demand projection. That doesn't mean anything, but it is a level where there could be some buying, especially with this support right by it, that 50 EMA in the lower Bollinger Band. And this ongoing supply line will be confirmed with a close above that level for end of day on the 16th. And this could be an area of interest, this close 4328.82, as there is an unfilled gap lap here, where the low of this bar on the 27th didn't make it below this close here. So that's technically a gap. So mark that level down. 43, 28.82. Let's see what happens there. And there's an arc level now right around that D wave up wave for 61.8 Fibonacci retracement level here. So that arc is at 42, 59.52 today, and we'll just kind of drift upwards for a while there and you can see a gap was created here so another lap right here where the high did not make it above the close from the 14th so there's a slight gap there or a lap and here's that 61.8 Fibonacci retracement. It does not need to nail it exactly. You know, give or take 25 or 30 points to the upside would start a good buying zone around that area. So here's a picture from the big board around that area, 4,200. And the weekly diamond extension bottom line of for a perfect uptrend channel is at 4262.37 for this week. So around that area is a good time to start buying even if it does head a little lower. And these two levels here are the horizontal support from 510 2021. And the top of the super bullish wedge is where the Fed made their first mistake back in July of 2021. So this is a very important area too. And again, that coincides with the Fibonacci retracement for D-Wave Up Wave 4 right here. And then we saw in the video the other day for the patterns chart that there's a pitchfork one there, the bottom of that pitchfork, I drew an extra tine or whatever it is and put it down there. So that's around that area too, 42, 50, 60. Here's that daily arc we just looked at, 42, 59. So anywhere in that area is a good buying zone. And here's the overlap three here it was given on the 14th for that bar and the bar before it was a low compared to this bar and this bar was a high compared to this bar's close so we're looking at the closes here close lower than this one and a close here higher than this one is an indication of a bottom from this downtrend here. Not the biggest one on earth, but it was a pretty painful downtrend if you're buying up here. So there could be a bounce tomorrow. It did not like that today, but a lot of knee jerk reactions as all the heavy hitters are still in the Hamptons. But first, they have to have their champagne gun fight. So those are all loaded and ready to go. Once they have that fun and games over with, they'll be back to their trading desks. And there was an anti-differential up, and I like those better than the 
plane differential up here so these are better indications of possible upside move at least most of the time nothing is 100 percent but when levels and indicators gather like this so it makes this all the more meaningful